The Bow Stratagem by George Falker Characters Summary Analysis Hello and welcome to the discourse. The Bow Stratagem was a comedy written by George Falker and was first performed in the year 1707. It was one of the last restoration comedies that gained huge success. The drama touches on the difficult subject of the divorce of an incompatible couple while the divorce wasn't legal in England during the restoration period. Even if a couple decided to separate during that time, the wife wasn't offered any money or help from the husband. Farker developed this plot involving a divorce of a woman with her drunken, unsupportive and unloving husband and then created a deceiving device to let her have her share of the money. Characters The main characters are the two young and handsome friends, Archer and Amwell, who have lost all their fortune in their expensive lifestyle. They plan to go away from the city and entrap some rich girl in love, rob her and then move away. The very first town they visit is Lichfield, where they meet Dorinda, the young daughter of a rich landlady, Lady Bountiful, who specializes in herbal medicines. Boniface is an inn-owner of Lichfield, where Archer and Amwell stay. Cherry is the inn-owner's daughter, who falls in love with Archer. Square Sullen is the son of Lady Bountiful and the brother of Dorinda. He is a drunkard who doesn't care for his wife at all. Scrub is his servant. Count Balair is a French soldier. Kate Sullen is Lady Bountiful's daughter-in-law, Sullen's unhappy wife. She tries everything to get the attention of Square Sullen, but he remains indifferent. Gypsy is Kate's maid. Gibbet is a robber who plans to rob Kate, Dorinda and Lady Bountiful with the help of his associates Backshot and Hounslow. Sir Charles Freeman is the brother of Kate Sullen who visits her. He is a past acquaintance of Archer and Amwell. Summary of the Bow Stratagem Archer and Amwell are two young handsome gentlemen richly spending their life and money in the extravagance of London. The two bow are almost penniless now as they have got the last 200 pounds left with them. While both are strong and able, none of them is willing to sell their swords for the wars and join the military. The only other option left for them is to trap some rich girls in their love and get money from them. However, they cannot let their friends in London know that they are penniless. Archer suggests that they should leave London for the countryside and let fate decide their course for them. Imwell agrees and suggests a shrewd plan that in the other towns they will visit, one of them will pretend to be a fine lord and the other will be his loyal servant. This will let them impress the country folk and deceive some rich landlord's beautiful girl. Archer agrees and it is decided that they will play the part of rich lord one by one and the first turn will be of Amwell while Archer will act as his servant. The first town they visit is Lichfield. They visit the local inn and befriend the inn owner Will Boniface. Amwell playing the part of lord invites Boniface to drink with him as he pays and tries to know about the rich people of the town. Boniface informs him about Lady Bountiful, who is a widow and lives with her son, daughter and daughter-in-law. Everyone in the town respects Lady Bountiful for her specialization in herbal medicines. Her daughter Dorinda is a young and beautiful and Lady Bountiful is looking for a good suitor for her. Boniface further informs that, that Lady Bountiful's son, Squire Sullen, is a lazy person who does nothing but sleeps, eat and drink. He recently married a beautiful London girl, but it seems she is not happy with Squire Sullen. At the inn, there are some French captive soldiers including Count Balea, his assistant Foyguard and their priest. Amwell tries to win the trust of Boniface by giving him the bag of their 200 pounds to keep in safety that he will take when he leaves the town. Boniface has connections with the local robber Gibbet, Hounslow and Backshot. He suspects that Amwell and Archer are thieves and plan to rob their money. He tells his young daughter to tease the servant Archer to gather more information about them while he offers more alcohol to Amwell, trying to pry about him. However, Amwell is too smart to spill his secrets and Boniface gets nothing. Cherry also tries her best, but instead of gathering any information about her father's interest, she finds herself attracted to Archer and feels she loves him. 
Lady Bountiful, her daughter Dorinda, and daughter-in-law Kate Sullen also learn about the new visitors to their town, and they are curious about them. Aimwell visits the local church to meet rich Dorinda and impresses her with his etiquettes. Dorinda immediately falls in love with this handsome stranger, while Kate Sullen finds Archer very attractive. She asks Scrub, her husband's servant, to invite Archer to their home so that Dorinda may come to know more about Aimwell. Archer visits their home, but Dorinda and Kate fail to get any information about Aimwell. However, Kate further falls into Archer's charm. Kate is recently married to Squire Sullen, but he has no interest in this beautiful wife. Kate and Dorinda attempt to awaken him and make him take interest in Kate as a dutiful, loving husband by pretending that Kate is having an extramarital affair with someone. They choose the captive Count Balear as a fake lover of Kate. Dorinda informs Sullen about Kate's fake affair and to offer proof, she hides Sullen in a closet so that he may see Kate meeting some stranger with his own eyes. As Count Balear is brought to their house and freed, Sullen rushes out of the closet with his sword in his hand. However, Kate stops him from attacking Balear by showing him a pistol aimed at him. Sullen gets subdued by his wife, but he makes a point that he doesn't worry if she is having an affair, as long as she is not falling for a Frenchman, as he detests all Frenchmen. Thus, the ruse of Kate and Dorinda fails, as Sullen doesn't care if Kate has an extramarital affair. As he leaves, Kate informs Count Balea that it was all a drama and she has no interest in him, as she is loyal to her husband. Count Balear says that even if she is a virtuous lady, she is not honest. He further says that she may call him at any time, whenever she needs his help. As Dorinda and Kate's stratagem proves to be a failure, she gets reckless. Meanwhile, Archer knocks at Dorinda's door and informs her that his master is ill and he is suffering a fit. He requests Lady Bountiful to check and cure him. Aimwell feigns a coma, but as soon as Dorinda comes to see him and caringly touches his hand, he regains consciousness and squeezes her beautiful hand. Archer is happy for his master gaining consciousness back, but suggests that he is still unwell and must rest at Lady Bountiful's house for a while. Dorinda and Kate invite them to a tour of their house. Aimwell takes Dorinda away, while Kate Sullen finds herself alone with her attractive beau, Archer. She is strongly attracted to him, especially since her own husband has never touched her since their marriage. As she shows Archer the door of her bedchamber, he enters in and seducingly invites her into her own bed. However, she is determined to keep her conscience and saves herself from falling for Archer. As Archer leaves, Scrub meets him who has become a friend of Archer, a fellow servant. He says that he is worried about his master Square Sullen, as he overheard Foygard, the assistant of Count Balear, bribing Gypsy, the maid of Kate, to conceal Balear in Kate's bedchamber at night so that he may sully the virtuous lady Kate Sullen. Meanwhile, Boniface connives with Gibbet, Henslow and Backshot to rob the house of Lady Bountiful. After reaching the inn, Archer and Aimwell confront Foygard and the priest and charge them of treason. They threaten them and in exchange for their silence, they demand that the priest will send Archer in place of Balea to Kate's bedroom. Back at the home, Kate receives the information that her brother Sir Charles Freeman is visiting her to help her get rid of her obnoxious husband. Dorinda is still enjoying the memories of romantic moments she had spent with Aimwell as she dreams of her future as Lord Aimwell's wife in London. Kate is also thinking of how charming Archer is. To avoid any struggle, Gibbet makes Square Sullen tipsy with alcohol at the inn. When Freeman reaches the town, he meets Sullen and starts talking to him without knowing that Sullen is his brother-in-law as the two have never met before. At night, Archer is shifted to Kate's bedroom in place of Balea. Cherry comes to know that the robbers have armed themselves to march and rob Lady Bountiful's house. She informs him well about their plan. Back at home, Kate is preparing to sleep as she dreams of Archer and moans. 
Archer notices her and realizes that she is weak for him. He jumps out of the closet in front of her and takes her in his arms. Kate gets frightened and her conscience and shame save her against Archer's charm. At the same time, Scrub runs into the bedroom and informs that robbers have attacked the house. Archer takes out his sword and as Jibet enters, he attacks them and subdues them. He calls for the help of Foygard, who is hidden in Gypsy's home, to bind Jibet. Hounslow and Bagshot were robbing Dorinda and Lady Bountiful in another, another room when Amwell reached there. He subdues them and saves Dorinda and her mother. Soon, Archer and Kate also appear and Archer suggests to Amwell that it is the right time when he should ask for Dorinda's hand from Lady Bountiful as she will feel grateful. At the same time, Freeman enters in the house and greets his sister Kate. When Archer sees him, he gets frightened because Freeman is one of their friends from London. He thinks Freeman will tell the truth about their fraud. Imwell, on the other hand, proposes to Dorinda at the same time and honestly tells her that he is no lord. He confesses that he is a fraud, falsely bearing his elder brother's title. Dorinda accepts Imwell as he is and soon gets good news from Freeman that the elder brother of Aimwell has suddenly died and now Aimwell is the only heir of his father and dead brother's estate. Dorinda and Aimwell cherish the news as Lady Bountiful nods for their marriage. Belair arrives there and informs that the inn has also been robbed. He gives Archer a letter from Cherry in which she informed him how her father collaborated with robbers and ran away with Lord Aimwell's money. However, Aimwell isn't worried about that money now when he is the true lord. Freeman reveals that he visited there to get his sister freed from the burden of a marriage where her husband is not at all interested in her. Archer finds the papers of Kate Sullen's estate in the things that Jibet robbed. He persuades Sullen to sign the papers of separation with Kate while offering all her estate that he, that he got as dowry back to her. Sullen is still in the effect of alcohol and he signs the papers. Everyone is happy as Aimwell is true lord now and he has got Dorinda as his wife. Archer is also happy because Aimwell offers all the estate of Dorinda to Archer. Freeman is happy because his sister is free now. Kate is also happy as now she can dream of marrying Archer as the play ends. So this is it for today. We will continue to discuss the history of English literature. Please stay connected with the discourse. Thanks and regards.